I've heard of Graham's number before. It's a very, very large number, but I hadn't really considered it in connection to physics. And as you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, that's a great way of bringing uh, numbers like this to life. So what is Graham's number and how does its decimal expansion connect to black holes and entropy, what we were just discussing? So, so, so yeah, so Graham's number, it's, it's, um, it was introduced several decades ago now by, by the mathematician Ron Graham. Um, and he was, he was, and it, it, for a long time, it was regarded as the, the largest number to ever to have been used in a mathematical proof. Um, so he was trying to study a problem in, in, in a branch of physics known as, as Ramsey theory. It was, you know, I'm not a math, I'm not a hardcore mathematician. I don't want to go into too much detail, but essentially it was a problem involving a, arrangements of, of sort of hypercubes in, in higher dimensions. And he wanted to get sort of a, um, he wanted to he was looking for some particular property and he wanted to get a bound on the dimensionality you needed to guarantee that this property occurred. And I think his lower bound was I mean, six or 30, but some, some ordinary number. And his upper bound, but well, you think, well, maybe it's 100, maybe the dimensionality goes up to 100 or 1,000. No, his upper bound was this ridiculously gigantic number, which we call Graham's. Well, actually, it's not quite Graham's number. There's a bit of a sort of, a, a, a sort of quirk of history there, but something like this number that we call Graham's number. And, you know, it's crazy big. This is a terrible estimate in some respects, right, that he's doing this problem and he's getting it. Oh, it's between these two numbers, six and that massive thing over there. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's far beyond, um, any of the numbers you normally think about, you know, certainly any numbers that you, you know, set billions, trillions, quadrillions, forget them. They're nothing. A Google, nothing. A Google Plex is nothing compared to various number. You know, you, when you express it, you, you don't express it in ordinary language. You use a special notation, cross arrow, arrow notation to describe it. It's, it's just gargantuan. And so I was asked by Brady Harron to do to do a, a YouTube video about it. And I, I, I just wasn't satisfied with the idea of, oh, I'm just going to describe the maths of it. I wanted to think about squeezing it into our, our universe. And so, um, so I thought, so I started to think about, well, what, could I, what would happen if I started to think about this? And so, and I don't mean in the, in the kind of sense of this fancy iron notation, but in the conventional sense that we normally think about numbers as some sort of decimal representation. Um, and then I thought, well, actually, if I tried to do that, there'd only be one possibility, and that's that my head would collapse to form a black hole. It's just long before I even reached the number. So, so the idea is that you would you would imagine this number in your head and its, it's decimal expansion is sort of appearing in, in, in your mind's eye. And if you want to try long each number carries a little bit of information and the point is is that information weighs it really does weigh i mean you know if you take a photo on your mobile phone um then the, the you know the, what happens is that that photo will be stored that information is stored on your phone and actually the way it's done is it, it sort of it raises some energy levels in the electron traps and so that raising of the energy level actually makes the phone weigh a tiny bit more not much more, tiny, tiny microscopic amount, but it does weigh a tiny bit more. And actually, information does weigh. And so it, with each digit that comes into your head, you know, very naively, you can think of it just as, as that's, bringing in that, that's bringing in a little bit of weight, a little bit of energy into your head. And as you accumulate those, you're starting to cram too much in, into too small a space, and you know that, Eventually, you, there's a limit to how much mass and energy you can squeeze into any given region, region of space before it collapses to form a black hole. Actually, in reality, as you started to try to do this, you start to try to sh shove this information in. You know, of course, could your brain even conceive it? Could could do you have the neural capacity? Um, well, actually, the book I talk about. Well, maybe our brains are actually a lot better at in principle at storing information than we realize. This is really some nice funky ideas by. A guy called Gear Diwali who speculated about how brains store, you know, store information compared to black holes. Really interesting ideas. We'll go into some details now, but they're really cool. Anyway, the point is, is that maybe we could store quite a lot, but of course, as you bring that information in, the brain's going to heat up, 
and you'd have to stop your brain from exploding, right? So you've got to try and keep it crammed in as the temperature rises. If you can somehow figure out how to store this information, so you've got to keep it crammed in. You've got to stop it from exploding. Let's suppose even if you manage to do all that, as these somebody keeps feeding you these numbers of Graham's number, literally feeding them in, then then um, then even if you can survive, you know, not manage to get your head to explode, then. At some point, there's just going to be so much information that the only object the size of your head capable of storing that information is the best store of information of the universe, and that's a black hole. So your head has to become a black hole at that point. And then, and actually, this will happen way before you even shake, touch the sides of Graham's number, right? You just won't even get close. Truth is... If you want to carry on, you could you could get you know your friend to keep feeding you. Know, you're an abomination now. Your head is now a black black hole, and you you would have to keep you could feed your black hole head more information, throw in more numbers. Don't know how they're really being stored, but anyway, you could imagine that. And then as that information goes into the black hole and mass is going in with it, the black hole is growing and growing and growing until it exceeds the size of the universe. Could it even do that? Possibly not, because it, it, there's also there's, there's there's other limits that can uh, that can cause the universe to break at that point. So so it, it it it's a crazy scenario. But this number is so big that just imagining its decimal expansion would, but well, you can never even get close to it. Your your head would collapse into a black hole long before you got near it. It ends at a seven, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Great way of of bringing the number to life, but. There would be lots of doppelgangers in a Graham's number universe. I think it is yes, uh, fair I to would. say. Yes, I would. Did agree you with happen that. to happen to calculate the size a black hole would have to be to contain Graham's number on its surface in in Planck area units? So I thought about this. It's it's basically the log of Graham's number. That would be the size of it, if I remember rightly. So that would be so. so the entropy. Let me see. So. so um, I think that was that was right. So that would be the length of the number. So I think you basically need a Graham's number sized head. I think is essentially it. The numbers are so it's so large that that's the order of magnitude that you're talking about. It might be the log of that if I remember right. But it, it's it's a huge order of magnitude, way bigger than, than it. And that would be in Planck. That would be in Planck units. That would be in units of the Planck length. So a gigantic, uh, a gigantic head. <laughs> um, yeah, that yeah. Would be right. So a, a black hole bigger than the observable universe? It would have to be, yes. And so this is one of the things I talk about, actually, is that, that there's, it's possible that, um, that there's, there's a limit even within that, that framework that you, that you... So our universe is surrounded by this, this horizon, this cosmic horizon. It might be a, what we call a de Sitter horizon, which is due to the fact that the universe has this positive, positive energy of the vacuum, this positive energy of empty space. And as your, as your event horizon of your black hole grows and it starts to approach this de Sitter horizon, if they two coincide, you reach what's called a Narii limit and the universe breaks at that point. So you'd have to find a way to sort of reduce the vacuum energy of the universe as well to allow you to push that de Sitter horizon out much further. So there's a lot of um, it's a tricky business. It's it's in some ways, and this is one of the things I, I mentioned. But Graham's number is too big for the universe. It's just too big for it. And this is one of the things, like you know, our numbers. So how we conceived of this number, which in any meaningful sense, in, it, when you relate it to any of the meaningful scales that we talk about in physics, is too big for the universe. What the hell is that? It's just it's amazing, really. And this is this is maybe where you, mathematics. And, and, and physics overlap in places, but, but they also go apart. 